Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today I want to talk about one of my absolute favourite Tetras. They're a Tetra with plenty of common names. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay guys, so these here are uh, my favourite Tetra. They have plenty of common names. Some of them include Kerai Tetras and Emperor Tetras, but Let's uh, jump in and talk about these awesome little fish. So we'll swing the camera around and take a bit of a closer look. So these awesome little critters here that you can see swimming around, uh, they impact these Kera, also known as the Purple Emperor Tetra, Kera Tetra, or the Emperor Tetra. Though they have plenty of uh, common names as well. Primarily they inhabit forested areas in waterways that are uh, often stained brown with tannins and um, decaying organic material is very prevalent. So, so as such, they like an acidic water with a pH of between 5.5 to 7. They do not do well in alkaline conditions. Temperature wise, they like to live between 76 to 80 Fahrenheit or 24 to 27 degrees Celsius. These guys originate from Brazil and they'll do super well in a heavily planted aquarium with lots of little areas to swim in between and um, set up mini territories and things like that. Heavily planted aquariums also help them with confidence and coloration. Uh, they'll appear more safe so having an area that they can swim back into will mean that they'll come out and um, greet you at the front of the aquarium. It might sound a little bit counterintuitive and you might think that if you provide areas too hard, you'll never see your fish, but in fact, it works quite the opposite. Also, if there's plenty of open swimming space, they won't show their best coloration. In terms of diet, like most other Tetras, they'll readily accept prepared foods like um, flakes and pellets, but they should also be offered regular meals with live and frozen foods such as brine shrimp and daphnia. A varied diet will really help to bring out the best coloration and development. They're a peaceful tetra and uh, it's recommended to keep them with other species from South America, such as other small tetras, pencilfish, hatchetfish, epistogrammas and other dwarf cichlids, Corydoras and Otocinclus, but they'll also do well with small gouramis, rasboras and peaceful barbs. There is a bit of a reputation that Kerai Tetras are fin nippers, though it hasn't been my experience. I found them to be super peaceful. I have, as you can see, I've housed them with a uh, better, which has quite long fins, and also super shy emerald rasboras, and I've not found them to be any hassle at all. So I do believe that the reputation as a fin nipper is somewhat undeserved. Perhaps it could be the case that if you keep fewer numbers that they might exhibit this sort of behavior. And if you have more of them, they sort of spar amongst each other instead. So I keep them in a group of 20 here. I have 10 of the blue varieties, which has uh, quite a nice blue sheen to the body. And then 10 of the black varieties, which interestingly enough, some of them have bright blue eyes and some of them have bright green eyes, which is really, really interesting to see. In terms of sexing these guys, females are less colorful and have a stockier body shape than males and they also have predominantly red uh, finnage, while males, they have mostly blue fins. They are easily bred in the hobby. Uh, they're an egg scatterer, so my recommendation would be to do the hang on breeder box uh, technique that I've shown you in videos before. I'll put a link of one of those examples as a card above here now. But um, basically you set up an area with some moss or spawning mops for them to be able to um, disperse their eggs within. And then you just make sure that they can't get to those eggs to predate on them. So you can do that through a false bottom or taking them out of the aquarium immediately after spawning. The water in the breeding uh, aquarium should be between 5.5 to 6.5 to make sure that the eggs will um, hatch properly. And as with any fish, it's a great idea to condition them properly beforehand with some live foods such as baby brine shrimp or live um, blackworms, things like that. The eggs will hatch within 24 to 48 hours and fry will become free swimming three to four days later. Make sure to feed the fry small foods such as vinegar eels or infusoria because they won't be born large enough to accept freshly hatched baby brine shrimp or microworms. So all in all, um, a fairly accessible Tetra. You'll find them at um, most aquarium stores. You might just have to look a little bit carefully though. And a uh, fish that you can get plenty of variety within, choosing the different uh, color variations and things like that. They do get uh, a larger size than some other Tetras, uh, maxing out at about 3.5 centimeters or 1.4 inches. 
but all in all I think they're a great option for a schooling fish. They're somewhat more subdued in coloration than say a classic neon tetra, but I think they're just as good looking. They'll show plenty of activity and readily take to foods, so they can be a great dither fish as well if you do want to bring out some confidence in some really shy fish. Okay guys, so there you go, that was my uh, care guide on the Emperor Tetra or the Kerai Tetra, however you like to pronounce it. Wonderful little fish and they'll, they'll bring plenty of activity into the aquarium. They're also a Tetra that you can breed which is pretty awesome and not the most common thing in the world. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, it always helps me out to smash the like button, hit subscribe, maybe even consider dinging the notification bell. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.